Welcome to the CBS Radio Mystery Theater Archives, the only YouTube channel which has the original classic episodes of the CBS Radio Mystery Theater in order with no ads. Thank you for listening, and now, enjoy the show. G. Marshall. What happens to the dead people? They leave us so abruptly without even looking back. But we do not let them go so easily. With memories, with feelings left unresolved, with old affections and old resentments hanging on, we are left with unfinished business. It's painful. We want to forget the dead, and we can't. But what about them? Are they just as troubled, just as restless, just as filled with memories and desires? It's something to wonder about. There he is. I see him. Bonjour, mes amis. I heard him. Comment ça va? I touched him. I touched him. mystery drama, The Sensitive, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Gordon Gould and Terry Keene. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and x -Lax. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Our story begins and ends in a suburb, and our characters are all suburbanites. People who want the culture and sophistication of a large city, but would like to see a tree just outside the window with a bird hopping about in it. People who like the theater, but long to live in a house with a backyard and a front yard, an upstairs and a downstairs. The doctor's office. Dr. Hayes there? This is Philo Denby. It's personal. Uh-huh. Just a moment, Mr. Denby. Philo! Yeah, what? Dinner's on the table. I'm talking to Frank. Philo? Uh, yeah. Uh, how's everything, Frank? Mm, okay. You? Okay. What can I do for you? Well, I just wanted to check with you about the tryouts. When are they? End of next week. Oh. Uh, what part are you trying out for? <laughs> I thought the part of Gregor's. Oh, that's a good part. Really good. Yeah, what about you? Well, I thought, Yalmar. Ah, that's the lead. Yeah. Well, I've acted in Ibsen before, you know. Remember, it had a gobbler. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, it wasn't the leading part. Uh... Yalmar's the leading part in The Wild Duck. Yeah, I got very good write-ups in The Bugle for Head a Gobbler. I don't know if you read them. No, I wasn't in that. Mm. Milo, dinner. Oh, uh, Sally wants me for something, Frank. I just wanted to check with you about the tryouts. Right, so long. Come on, everything's going to get cold. I want a drink first. You haven't got time. It's only six o'clock. What are we eating so early for? Sit down and I'll tell you. Frank's trying out for Gregor's in the Wild Duck. Oh? I think I'd be very good as Yalmar. Don't you? Marvelous. Come on, sit down. Why can't I have a drink? What's the idea of eating at six o'clock? We are going out. We are? Where to? And you have to take a bath first. I'm clean. And change into your dark suit. What for? Your boss's wife called up this morning. Joan Maynard called up? What did she want? They're holding another seance tonight. Oh, not again. They've been going to a lot of them. But that last one was so boring. Well, that was a month ago, and Joan says they've learned a lot since then. Like what? Well, for one thing, everybody should take a bath two hours before the seance. Oh, for heaven's sake. And all the men should wear dark suits, and all the women should wear white dresses. Is that why you got that thing on? And there's a lot more they've learned. She didn't say what. She said, we'll see when we get there. I don't want to go. Oh, Philo, you have to. If Carl Maynard wasn't my boss... But he is. Uh, a real dictator. He snaps his fingers and I'm supposed to jump. Anyway, I want to go. What for? I just think there's something to it. You're nuts. Last time, I think I really 
saw something. I didn't. It was kind of uh, a mist, a wispy mist. Mm, somebody's cigarette. Oh, come on. You know nobody's allowed to smoke. Well, something, not somebody. Not some dead somebody. Anyway, finish your dinner and take your bath and put on your dark suit. We're due at the Maynards at 8.30. Well, well, well. Come on in. We're not late, are we? No, no. Well, how are you? Tip top. You, Carl? Never better? John, the dandies are here. Be right there. Come on in the living room. Well, hello there. How are you both? Uh, Joan, dear. Joan. Hello, Philo. What have you done to the room? Aha. That's part of the preparation. Uh, you've taken your bath, haven't you? Yeah, we both have. Preparation for what, Carl? Why, for the materialization, of course. You see, it's been discovered through experimentation that certain conditions are conducive to the materialization of the entity. Uh-huh. You'll notice that the room is what you might call slightly chilly. Yeah, I noticed that. It is precisely 62 degrees. That's so. And uh, you notice the lights? Very pretty, Carl. Well, oh, they're not meant to be pretty. We've discovered that red, yellow, or orange lights encourage the materialization of the entity. The actinic rays of blue or violet, well, they don't care for those. They? The entities, my boy, the entities... But they love the warm colors. Hence, we've shaded all the bulbs with red linen. We could have used paper, but... I had this old red linen dress I didn't wear anymore, so I cut it up. This is all very interesting, Carl. Uh, now we uh, have to set the chairs. Oh, I thought we uh, sat in a circle. A semi-circle. It's much better. Much. Follow. Uh, you want to help me set the chairs? Yes, sir. Oh, what darling chairs. Mm, Bentwood. We got them from an ice cream parlor that was going out of business. We have 16 of them. The ideal seance should have 14 to 16 people, but tonight on such short notice, uh, there wasn't time. Uh, we'll start the uh, semicircle here, Philo. Okay, Carl. Say, did I hear somewhere that you and Sally belong to the Main Street players? Yes, we do. Enjoy it? Very much. I'm in a group, isn't it? Well, strictly speaking, yes. But we've done some very good things. I don't suppose you saw a head of Gobbler. I had a good part in that. Oh, did Yeah. We're going to do the wild duck next. You like Ibsen? Oh, I can take him or leave him. You know. Yeah. We're having tryouts next week. I'm auditioning for the part of Yalmar. It's the leading role. Well, I, I hope you get it. I think I can do something with it. Uh, Sally wants us to join up. Oh? Interested in acting, are you? Oh, not me. Joan, uh, she can sing and dance a little. Are you people ever do musicals? Once a year. Well, now we're all set here. Uh, where are the girls? Uh, uh, John, Sally. Yes, dear. Ready to start. Oh, I'm so excited. Well, maybe we shouldn't expect too much tonight with only four people. However, we can but try, right? Absolutely right. Be seated, please. Man, woman, man, woman. That's the best way we've been led to believe. All set? Sit down, Carl. We uh, really should have some music. Uh, harmonica is very good, but I couldn't find a recording of a harmonica, well, so... we'll just have to do without. Sit down, Carl. A little Debussy wouldn't be a mess, I feel. Do sit down, Carl. We're still experimenting, you understand? Oh, that's nice. Mm. Please... Sit down, Carl. Yes, yes. I'll sit between uh, Joan and Sally. That leaves you on one end of the semicircle, Philo. Joan on the other end. You're right. I think I'm beginning to feel something. It's too early. I suppose it is. Now, it's all right for us to talk, but very quietly, very naturally. No one is to feel any stress or strain. Everybody very relaxed. Understand? I understand. Now, the four of us constitute a human battery. Battery? Yes, we generate power. By joining hands, we concentrate our power. Sally, give me a hand. John, give me yours. Sally, give your other hand to Philo. Now, Philo has his right hand free. Joan has her left hand free. From the free hands of Philo and Joan, the power we collectively develop will pass into the sensitive. If we are so fortunate as to have a sensitive in our group... Oh, I hope so. Uh, uh, speak softly. Speak naturally, but uh, softly. <clears throat> well, I, I feel so relaxed. Oh, does everybody feel relaxed? I do. 
Philo, do you? <clears throat> yeah, uh, pretty relaxed. We should have weighed ourselves. Weighed ourselves? What does that no, have to... No, 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 speak softly, Philo. Why should we weigh ourselves? Because the entity will assume, if he materializes, a temporary human body. You mean that, Carl? I most assuredly do mean that, Philo. To build up this temporary human body, the entity must draw substance from the sensitive. Need I tell you that the sensitive must be a uniquely organized man or woman, one from which such substance can be removed temporarily without injury to his or her health? Well, we're all very healthy, as far as I know. I know I am. I had a physical last week, Philo. You? A month ago. You were okay, yeah? Huh? Mm-hmm. But, oh, uh, why do you say we should have weighed ourselves? Because a true sensitive who loses substance temporarily to the materialized entity loses parts of himself or herself, again, temporarily. I've heard of a sensitive losing as much as 60 pounds. You don't say. Now, in a little while, if all goes well, we should feel a gentle wind, a cool breeze on our hands. Oh, it's, it's all too... The uh, sensitive in our midst will start to pass into a trance state. He will start to go limp. Or she will. And will pass into that condition essential to the entity who wants to work through him. It's all so... <gasps> I, I, I feel it. What do you feel, Sally? The cool wind blowing over our hands. Philo, do you feel it? I do. I feel it. Carl? I too. It's getting stronger. The wind. Colder. Oh, it's very strong. Philo, do you feel it? Uh, the nerve force is passing through us. There must be a sensitive here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is possible may even be probable that we are about to witness the evolution of an entity. Ladies, gentlemen, it is possible, it may even be probable, that we are about to witness the evolution of an entity from a sphere beyond our own. It just seems incredible, doesn't it? Now, wait, 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 wait. We can't be sure. No, not yet. Philo? Don't, don't you feel... Maybe... Philo, look. Quiet, quiet, quiet. A mist, a vapor coming from Philo's side. His right side. We must try to give off more power. I see it. I see it. There it is. Bonjour, mes amis. I hear it. Comment ça va? I touched it. Do you believe that three people saw, heard, and touched a being from another sphere? That their combined magnetism drew him into their midst? That from one of them, he made himself a temporary body, including vocal cords? Do you believe that? No matter. They believe it. Strindberg said, an obsessional conviction about supernatural powers causes events that confirm the reality of those powers. And the poet William Blake put it more succinctly when he wrote, A firm persuasion that a thing is so makes it so. We'll come back shortly with Act Two. As our first act ended, Philo and Sally and Carl and Joan were seated in a semicircle with hands joined. The lights were shaded with red linen. The temperature of the room registered the chilly 62 degrees. A cool breeze had started to blow across their hands, increasing to a strong wind. They were awaiting the materialization of an entity from another sphere. Look, a mist, a vapor. I see ah, it. There it is. Bonjour, mes amis. I hear it. Comment ça va? I, I touched it. 
touched it. Now, quiet, everybody. Everybody must remain relaxed and quiet. We don't want to frighten him. What? What is that? Philo? Look, it's Philo. Is he all right? He looks so... so He's shrunken. He looks... He looks as though he... Shrunk. He's smaller somehow. Now, don't be alarmed, ladies, and remain calm. Philo is our sensitive. Philo. Speak to me. Say something. He can't, Sally. He's in a deep trance. But is that all right? All sensitives pass into a state of trance. Why? Hello. He said something. How are you? Philo. He did say something. I heard him. He's not speaking to us, Sally. He's speaking to the entity. Will the entity answer? We must wait and see. In all probability, he will. Philo is waiting, I think, for the entity to build up his temporary body. The vapor is rising. <gasps> Look. Sally, you said you touched it. I did. Hmm? I did. I, I, I think I did. How did it feel? Like... Like unbaked bread. Like bread when it starts to rise. I see a head. Yes. Shoulders. The whole body. He's wearing a uniform of some sort. Oh, who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who are you, sir? My name is Pierre Sorel. In life, I was a soldier in the army of the great Emperor Napoleon. I died in his service, having lost my leg at the Battle of Borodino, fighting the Russians. He's still wearing the uniform. He has a wooden leg. To think that Philo, of all people, I mean Philo... Sally, do you think you could touch the entity again? He's standing directly in front of you. I, I, I don't want to let go of Philo's hand. It's so cold. He's in a trance, dear girl. It can't hurt him if you let go. Touch the entity, Sally. Sir? Pierre? Do you mind? I don't think he'll speak to anyone but Philo. Go on. Touch him. He's... He's very warm. Yes. He's very good-looking. He must have died young. Do you want to tell us any more about yourself? No. I wish he'd say something about us. Yes. Yes, tell us what's going to happen. S something like that. There is a little lady in this room who likes to sing and dance. Me? That's me. She has done so in the past. Oh, that's true. I have before I got married. Retrocognition. Knowledge of the past. Well, what about the future? Precognition. Will the little lady sing and dance again, Pierre? Not, not immediately. But someday? Yes, someday. When, Pierre? Dancing, singing upon a stage with an audience. March applause. Oh, oh, when... When, Pierre? It will be some months before... Uh, yes, months. First, the little lady will fall ill. Yes, she will be sick for a time. Oh. But she will recover? Mais oui, oh yes. She will recover and live to dance and sing upon a stage. You hear that, honey? Must mean the Main Street players. Oh, yes. I wonder... I wonder, can he see ahead for the rest of us? Oh, darn it. I wish I could ask him things. So do I. Well, maybe Philo will ask him if he knows what we want. Oh, Philo must be telepathic. He's a true sensitive. He must have a huge amount of the psi faculty. Mm. He must be loaded with it. Or he couldn't have materialized the air. You see, people with large amounts of the psi quality... Have precognition, retrocognition, clairvoyance, and telepathy. Yeah. Remember when I said, what about the future? 
Remember, Carl? And right away, Father said, Will the little lady sing and dance again, Pierre? Remember that? And Pierre said, Someday. And I said, When? And Philo said, When, Pierre? Oh, of course, Philo's telepathic. Oh, if he'd only ask the entity about me. Uh, do you see the future for someone else, Pierre? Uh, for a man, perhaps? You see? Success. Oh, how? Uh, when? What? 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 what, what day? Soon. Soon. He's fading. He's going away. Success. 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 Soon. He's gone. some soup, a few crackers. Oh, Sally? Yes, darling. I brought you some soup. Split pea. What's it for? Lunch? Dinner. I had dinner. Well, that was yesterday. Huh? Come on, try it. It's good. Well, what am I doing in bed? Darling, you were sleeping. Oh. I didn't want to disturb you till I was sure you were all slept out. Well, how long have I been asleep? 21 hours. Just last night at 11 o'clock. What time is it now? Eight o'clock in the evening. Didn't I go to work? No, dear. <sighs> Holy Moses. I've got to call Carl. No, no, no not now. You j just lie back. He'll be furious. He won't. I already called him. <sighs> What'd you tell him? I didn't have to tell him anything. He understood perfectly. How could he? You really don't remember a thing about it, do you? Did I get drunk or something? Blackout? You don't remember going to Carl and Joan's house? Carl and Joan Maynard? Their house? The the red lights. Remember them? Red lights? The music? Uh, was it Debussy? Yes, yes. See, now you do remember. Yeah. Remember the bent wood chairs and sitting in a semicircle and, and uh, the cold wind? We, we were waiting for... For, 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 for the for... entity to appear. Yeah, to materialize. That's right. Well... Did he? Yes, my darling. Thanks to you. What did I have to do with it? You were the sensitive. Me? Me? Well, who, who was the entity? A French soldier named Pierre Sorel. He fought under Napoleon and lost a leg at the Battle of Borodino. You remember? Kind of. Oh, not really. But darling, you were in a trance. I had a very hard time getting you home. Am I all right now? Well, you look all right. But you see, when the French soldier materialized, well, when any entity materializes, he sort of borrows things from the sensitive. What things? Well, he has to flesh out his body, you see? Oh, that's probably Carl or Joan wanting to know how you are. Hello? Sally, this is Carl Maynard. How is he? He's awake, and he seems fine. Oh, that's good, Sally. Uh, you remember last night? We were just talking remember about Pierre it. Remember, said something about the little lady who loved to sing and dance? Uh, yes, and he said she would again. But before that, he said she'd be sick for a little while, remember? Yes. Sally? Jones down with the flu. No. Yep, woke up it this morning. Oh, I've got to tell Philo. Well, naturally, we want to hold another seance as soon as possible, but not until Jones well. Uh, the doctor says uh, maybe in a couple of weeks. Oh, of course, Carl. Uh, look, I've got to tell Philo. He'll be so pleased. Sure. I'll give him my best. Tell him to take his time about coming back to work. I will. Goodbye, Carl. Tell me what? Joan Maynard's down with the flu. Oh? Philo, that's what the entity predicted last night. Pierre said she would sing and dance in front of an audience. Now, I'm sure that means the Main Street players because she's been nagging Carl to join. But first... She'd be sick for a little while. And now she is. Oh. Oh, isn't that exciting? As soon as she's well, we're going to have another seance. Sally. Sally, am I really a sensitive? Darling, of course you are. Oh, what was that you said about the entity taking parts of the sensitive's body to build up his own body? Only temporarily, darling. Sally, 
Call Frank Hayes and make an appointment for a complete checkup. You had one a month ago. Yes, but if I'm really as sensitive, if I'm going to go on with this thing, I've got to be in tip-top physical condition. Go on, Sally, call him. Say I'll be in tomorrow. Roll up your sleeve, Philo, will you? Sure. Tell me about this seance that knocked you out. It was the darndest thing. I didn't even want to go, but Sally was very keen on it. And besides, Carl Maynard is my boss, so... Sure, I'm... sure. Well, the idea of the seance was to get an entity to materialize. An entity? Mm-hmm. A being from a sphere other than our own. Uh-huh. Well, in order to do this, you have to have a sensitive. Yeah? And that's somebody with enough nerve force, enough magnetism to attract the entity. Well, surprise, surprise, the sensitive turned out to be me. And I hadn't even wanted to go. Uh, lie back, will you, Philo? Yeah, that's it. <sighs> How did you find out that you were the sensitive? Well, that's what's so incomprehensible. We all sat around in a semicircle. I was bored to death, if you really want to know. And we talked a little bit, very quietly, very naturally. And that's the last thing I remember. I don't remember the materialization at all. I must have been in a trance state. That's the only explanation that makes any sense at all. Uh-huh. Uh, what, uh, what happened when you were in this trance state? Well, they tell me that this entity appeared just appeared. First as a sort of mist or vapor. Then it grew and developed into a man. He said his name was Pierre, and he'd been a soldier under Napoleon, and he'd lost his leg at Borodino. He wouldn't talk to anybody but me. Because you were the sensitive. That's right, yeah. I don't even remember getting home. Sally put me to bed, and <laughs> I slept for 21 hours. Then I had her call you. No, I was surprised. You just had a physical a month ago. But you see, an entity has to have substance in order to materialize. And he gets this substance from the sensitive. They say it's only temporary for as long as the seance lasts. But I wanted to make sure. I mean, if I'm going to go on with this thing... Are you I... considering that? If my health is okay, why not? True sensitives are very rare. Uh, what... What kind of questions did this entity, this, this Pierre, answer? That's the amazing part. He said that Joan Maynard would sing and dance on a stage. Now, she and Carl have been kicking around the idea of joining our little theater group. But, Pierre said, before that happened, she'd be sick for a while. And the very next day, Joan came down with the flu. Well, there's a lot of it going around. Philo, I'd, uh, I'd like to go to one of these seances sometime. Joan will be pretty well soon. It's only the flu. Then we plan on having another one. Well, keep me in mind. I will. Oh, and Pierre predicted success for Carl. He disappeared right after that, so he didn't give any details. Well, maybe next time. That's what we're hoping. Well, how am I? You're perfectly okay, as far as I can see. I have to wait for the results of a couple of tests. But... I feel wonderful. Good, good. Come on, I'll walk you outside. See you tonight? Tonight? We're at the theater. Tryouts for the Wild Duck. Oh, oh, no, I'm auditioning tomorrow night. A lot of us couldn't make it tonight, so they... Well, good luck. You'd make a great Gregor's. I hope you get Yalma. <laughs> We'd be working together. Have a lot of fun. Try and get me in on the next seance, right? Right. So long. Have you got his records? Right here. Thanks. Something's bothering me. Now, he was here for a checkup just a month ago. Ah, here we are. What do you know? He's lost ten pounds, and his blood pressure is way up. How about that? Do you believe that a dead person can become alive? Well, uh, sort of alive? for a limited length of time by borrowing substance? Does that mean arteries and veins and muscles? Does that mean the dead person come alive can talk if he wants to? Does he have vocal cords? Can he walk about? I'll tell you something. I don't know. 
We shall return with the final act shortly. At the close of Act Two, Philo Denby had just left his doctor's office, having gone there for a physical checkup after a trying session at a seance where he discovered that he himself was a true sensitive, capable of enticing an entity out of the grave and speaking with him. As Philo left the office, his doctor turned to the nurse. Something's bothering me. He's lost ten pounds. And his blood pressure's way up. Are you comfortable, Philo? Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine, Carl. You better make sure. Really, Frank, I'm perfectly comfortable. Well, you see, Doctor, he's tied to the chair, and the chair is bolted to the floor. It's just a precaution. Something to silence the voices of doubt. <laughs> now, <clears throat> shall we all take our places? I'd like to sit next to Philo, if that's all right. Well, I'm afraid that's not all right. The proper conditions for a seance require alternating the sexes. Man, woman, man, woman, man, woman, so. If you'll uh, just take the chair at the further end of the semicircle, mm. I'll start the music. Debussy served us well last time, so, uh... Now, I think we're all set. As soon as I take my place... There we go. Quiet conversation is permissible, Dr. Hayes, on any subject. Oh, fine. You all recovered from the flu, Mrs. Maynard? I'm quite recovered, thank you. Hmm. Very nice of all of you to let me come here tonight. We're glad to have you. Yes, it's our pleasure. Philo told me a little something about the last time. <laughs> what? What is it? The breeze. The what? The cool breeze. Don't you feel it on your hands? It should change to a wind very soon now. Do you feel it, Dr. Hayes? You know, I think I do. I, I, I can almost hear it. I hear it, too. I hear it. So do I. Look. The vapor. The mist. From Philo's right side. You see, Dr. Hayes? The entity is materializing. It's Pierre. I see his head. Now his shoulders. Fascinating. His whole torso. His legs. Yes, yes. Yes, he has a wooden leg, you know. Philo told me. Lost it in Moradino's. I know. Why doesn't Philo speak to him? Good evening, Pierre. He got my thought telepathically. Good evening. I am happy to be here. Isn't he handsome? You know, I think I can detect a heartbeat. You mean that, Doctor? Oh, does Philo know that we'd like to pick up where we left off last time? You know about your future. Oh, yes, yes, yes. He knows. Uh, people with the psi faculty have precognition, Dr. Hayes. As well as... I can see his pulse beat and his breathing. Can you really... That's incredible. Frank's a doctor, Carl. Look, I don't suppose you'd let me get up and go over to Philo? Oh, no, 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 oh, absolutely not. You no. could spoil everything. Better stay where you are, Frank. Anyway, we want to hear about Carl's future. If Philo will just ask Here. him. Is there anything you can tell us about... about a certain person in this room? A man? Yeah, a man. You started to tell us last time, but... Success. Success. Yes, that's what you said before, but he's already very successful, and what we'd like to know is... <laughs> I told you, success. He sounds cross. Oh, yes, but, but, but... What more do you want? A few details. Do not bother me with details. But... We need to know. Excuse me. Dr. Hey, hey, Frank, sit down. Sit down. Philo is my patient. What are you doing? You're spoiling him. You have no right. We should never have let him in here. Frank, please. I think you all should know Philo's breathing is extremely rapid and his pulse rate extremely high. In my opinion, dangerously so. Philo, you all right? Oh, just tired. Well, no wonder... It was a very trying session for you. Very disappointing for us. Well, Pierre did materialize, though, didn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah. Frank said he could see him breathe, see his heartbeat. Oh, good. Good. And then, just as we were about to find out about Carl's future, Frank had to go and spoil everything. He was 
He was worried about you. Got up from his chair, went over and took your pulse, listened to your breathing. Your breathing was very rapid and your pulse rate was very high, he said. I, I feel fine now. Well, that's good. But Carl says stay in bed all day if you want to. Maybe I'll just do that. I may quit my job. Would you do that? Why not? I think my future lies in the psychic realm. True sensitives are very rare, Sally. You know that. Yes, I do know that, but... If I am one of them, then it's only logical that... that I... That you what, Philo? That I should devote myself to... Oh, telephone. I'll be right back, darling. We need to talk about this. Hello? Sally, this is Joan. Uh, yes, Joan. Guess what? What? Well, Carl auditioned for the Main Street Players for The Wild Duck, and, uh, guess what? What? He got the part. What part? The part of Yalmer. It's the lead. Imagine, my Carl is going to be a star. Pierre said he was going to have success, remember? Yeah. When Philo asked him... Yeah, by the way... How is Philo? Well, exhausted. Of course, but he's all right, isn't he? I think so. Don't you know? Joan, he, he's he's talking funny, sort of, I don't know, drifting off and saying some kind of weird things. Sally. Sally, is he, is he going into a trance? Well, I don't know. I never thought of that. Then ma Pierre might materialize. Maybe. Oh, Sally, I'm coming over there. Now, don't you leave his side till I get there, okay? Okay. Well, that was Joan, Philo. Are you all right, darling? She's coming over. She says Carl got the part of Hjalmar in The Wild Duck. Isn't that lucky? His first audition? Can you imagine? Philo? Philo. It isn't a trance state, Sally. Well, then what is it, Frank? Sally, Philo is dead. He... He can't be. He can't be. He is. There's no doubt about it. Philo is dead. But he... He was fine a little while ago. We were talking about... About giving up his job and becoming sensitive. And he started to sound kind of vague and rambling... And just then the phone rang. It was Joan Maynard, all excited because Carl had gotten a part in the Wild Duck. Part of Yalmer, I heard. I didn't want to tell Philo because I knew he wanted that part. I told Joan that Philo was acting sort of funny, and she said he was probably going into a trance. I never dreamed. Of course, of course she didn't. And Joan was very excited. She said maybe Pierre would materialize again if Philo was really in trance. Oh, oh, dear. Yeah, now. And she said she would come right over him. If I'd known... Well, you couldn't have known. How could you? Right then, while I was talking to her, Philo was dying. Sally. But I had no idea. I said, sure, come on over. I had, I had no idea. I hung up the phone. I came over to Philo's bed, and he... He looked all right. He really did, Frank. It must have been very sudden. And I said, honey, that was Joan Maynard, and she says Carl got the part in The Wild Duck, and he... He didn't answer me, Frank. He didn't answer me. And two minutes before that, we'd been talking about things. Oh, I... You just go ahead and cry. But that's all. When he didn't answer me, I called you. I got here as fast as I could. And now he's dead? Frank, why did he die? What killed him? I don't know, Sam. But you must know. If you'll permit an autopsy. Oh, no, I, I don't know about he that. He was in good health. We know that. He just had a checkup. Do you... Do you think it had something to do with the seances? Do you think they were too much for us? Sally, I just don't know. Was it Pierre? Could he have... You know... Well, as I said... Frank, do you remember at the last seance, the one you were at, Philo and Pierre were having... A little argument. Not an argument exactly. It was more like a disagreement. Do you remember? Yes, Philo was trying to find out more about what kind of success Carl was going to have. And Pierre didn't want to tell him. They got kind of of irritable, both of them. That was when 
You got up and went over to Philo and took his pulse, remember? His breathing was very rapid. Do you think maybe Pierre... Maybe Pierre killed him? No, Sally. No, I don't think so. But that would be terrible, wouldn't it? Terrible. And I don't think it's true. Well, the... Oh, that, that, that's the doorbell. Must be Joan. You want me to go downstairs and open the door for her? Yes, would you? Sure. Joan doesn't know what happened. She thinks Philo is in a trap. Well, I'll tell her. I don't want to talk to anybody right now. I couldn't. I understand. Oh, Philo. What have we done to you? My darling. Pierre. Is it really you? It is I, my love. C'est moi. Take me in your arms, Pierre. And never let me go. Have no fear, beloved. I shall never let you go. Never. If you can believe that, you can believe anything. That's my opinion. But then, who am I? What am I? Just an average person? Trusting nothing? Suspicious of everything? What do I know? I wonder if anybody's planning to do the wild duck. I'd be great as Shalmar. I could really get my teeth into that part. I'd be a smash. I'd really kill the people. I'll be back shortly. You know, an actor doesn't just play what you see on the stage or the screen or hear on your radio, as you're doing now. No, in addition to what you see or hear, he plays in his own mind the entire life of the character he portrays. He knows his character from birth onwards to death and, well, why not? Maybe even beyond. With so much imagination, so much application, such energy and devotion, an actor, more than anyone, should be able to turn himself into an entity who materializes. Perhaps I could do it one day. I must keep a sharp lookout for a sensitive. Our cast included Gordon Gould, Terry Keene, Marion Haley, Ralph Bell, and Nat Polin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Exlax and Buick Motor Division. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I hope you enjoy this episode of CBS Radio Mystery Theater.